I'm more of a hardware type of guy, really, but uh, today, in the spirit of December, I thought we might look at this very cool software that transforms the Macintosh into a PC. Well, sort of, anyway. So let's get on with it. In the early days of personal computing, compatibility was a major issue. Different computer platforms had different hardware and software, which made it difficult to exchange files and collaborate across platforms. Macintosh machines were sleek and appealing and were really popular in the area of desktop publishing. On the back of the success of the IBM 5150 launched in 1981, the PC clone market was growing, however, among home and business consumers alike, establishing MS-DOS as the dominant operating system by the late 1980s. That's where Soft PC came in. Soft PC was an emulation software that allowed Macintosh users to run PC software on their computers. It was originally developed by Insignia Solutions in 1986 to run DOS on Unix computers, but uh, only one year later, in 87, it was ported to Macintosh and quickly became popular among business and education users who needed to work with both Macintosh and PC software. Installing Soft PC was easy. Users simply inserted the Soft PC diskette into their Macintosh and either ran Soft PC from floppy or installed it onto the hard drive by dragging it. My version here has three disks, one with the program and two more with data. Then there is the option of size for the virtual hard drive. I'm going for a large hard drive since I'm using a blue SCSI with a modern SD card with plenty of storage on this machine. On my 2SI though, I had to go for a smaller virtual hard drive as its physical SCSI hard drive is rather full. Soft PC could be configured to run a variety of PC operating systems, including MS-DOS, Windows 3.1, and even OS 2. This version of Soft PC 3.0 from 1993 really only has the settings of CGA or EGA, and the memory is that of a maxed out IBM 5150 at 640 kilobytes. But uh, here are some of the possible settings in the menu. The flexibility came with a price though. The soft PC set you back 595 US dollars in 1987, which uh, is equivalent to um, about 1600 US dollars in 2023. This should of course be seen in the context of general computer prices at the time. IBM's PS2 system launched in uh, the same year in 1987 cost between 2,200 and 10,900 depending on configuration. That is about 6,800 to 32,000 US dollars in today's money. In light of this, soft PC was a pretty good deal. With uh, soft PC, Macintosh users could run a variety of PC software, including productivity applications, games, and educational software, of course. Soft PC allowed Macintosh users to collaborate with PC users more easily and open up new possibilities for cross-platform compatibility. Now, I'm simply trying to play games, of course. Here I am playing Gorillas on the monochrome Macintosh SE30. And here we have it in EGA mode, running off my 2SI seen previously on the channel. I also got D&D to work, Dungeons and Dragons. Also Dive, a dive bomber game, and Prince of Persia. But uh, they run too slow to actually play, as you can see here.
course, running PC software on a Macintosh isn't always perfect. Soft PC was an emulation software, which meant that uh, PC software ran slower on a Macintosh than it would on a native PC, of course. Some PC software was also incompatible with soft PC or required more processing power than a Macintosh could provide. I tried a bunch of my DOS games with uh, this soft PC, but uh, in the end I only got these uh, to work. This breakout game Cyber got this error. Wolfenstein 3D got this. And the 8-bit guys Planet X3 simply doesn't load. Maybe it's a memory issue rather than some other faults. Soft PC wasn't the only PC emulation software my dad used back in the day though. For his Titanium PowerBook G4 here from 2001, he got this, Windows 2000, in something called Virtual PC. And here it is running on my lovely iMac G4. And since Windows 2000 is DOS compatible, here we have PX3 running on an iMac G4. Pretty cool, but I can only get the PC speaker to work and the sound level is very low. Still, I like it. Today's soft PC is remembered as a pioneering software that helped bridge the gap between different computer platforms. It was one of the first emulation software that allowed users to run PC software on Macintosh and paved the way for future emulation and virtualization software. I remember my dad and I were considering buying a computer that had both a PC and a Mac inside with double the hardware, but those were expensive back in the day. I would very much like to get my hands on one of those today, but of course, soft PC was the cheap option back in the early 90s. Today, this variety of emulation and virtualization software that allow users to run different operating systems and software on their computers, such as VirtualBox or DOSBox, these software have come a long way since the early days of soft PC and can run PC software on a Macintosh with almost native performance, especially now since the hardware is so much more capable. At this point, soft PC is of course a relic of the past, but its legacy lives on. It was a software that helped break down barriers between different computer platforms and allowed users to collaborate and exchange ideas more easily. And I think it's pretty cool. Just look at DOS running on an old compact Mac. Well, that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, do hit that like button. And if you'd like more retro computing stuff in general coming your way in the future, and more hands-on DOS videos in the month of December. Do subscribe so you won't miss that. And thank you for watching.